Jace, I'm going to sleep soon. You're not home yet? Ugh, I'm sorry. I'll be back on the last train, so it will take a bit more time. You can go to sleep first. You said that, but you didn't come home until morning the other day. Are you drinking tonight? Yeah. That's been happening a lot lately, and your overtime hours are increasing. Can't you reduce your drinking parties a bit? I can't help it. There are various social obligations associated with work. There are times when I want to go home, but I can't. But you don't drink alcohol, do you, Jace? Even if I can't drink, I have to attend because it's part of my job. But if you come home in the morning several times a week, you'll ruin your health. You're not that young anymore. I think you should take better care of your health. You already have a lot of overtime. I'm okay. I know my body best. I'm getting plenty of rest, so it's okay. If you're taking a rest, I think you should finish your work earlier, and sleep comfortably at home. Are you particularly confrontational today? I'm working hard for you, Claire. I understand, but you've been sleeping at home less and less lately. I'm worried. If you're worried, can you not nag me like this? It just adds more stress. I'm sorry, but Jace, you've not been replying promptly lately, have you? When I can't reach you, I get worried that you're being forced to drink and have passed out, or that you've had an accident. You understand because I'm always late lately. You don't need to worry unnecessarily. But I still worry. Okay, I'll try to be more in touch from now on. Is that okay? Well. But I still think you should rest more at home. You often leave the house even on your days off, right? You won't be able to recover. You're right. Then I'll relax at home on my next day off. Really? Then I'll make a lot of nutritious food you like. Yeah, thank you. And I'm sorry. I was harsh, even though you were worried about me. I might be tired after all. It's okay. I know you're working hard, but you need to take better care of yourself. After all, I'm working too. Don't overdo it. Understood. I'll try to come home as early as possible. Yeah, be careful coming home. I've prepared the bath for you. Hey, Jace. I was checking your bank account just now. It seems that. Two hundred ten thousand dollars has disappeared from our savings since we got married. Do you know anything about this? If not, I'm going to the police right away. Sorry, that was me. I figured. What is this? What do you mean? I'm sorry. I'll explain later. What do you mean by later? Where are you now? I'm outside. I know that. I mean, where are you, and what are you doing? The money seems to have been withdrawn yesterday. Did you possibly use that money for something? No, that's not it. Well, that's not entirely true. Please explain right now. Today is a holiday. You can come home, right? Sorry, I can't come home yet. So, what on earth are you doing? Please explain properly. I'm at my parents' house now. Huh? Your parents' house? Why? Actually, my mom got sick. We need money for her hospitalization and surgery, so I took two hundred ten thousand dollars from the account. What? Your mother got sick? Why didn't you tell me? Sorry, my mom asked me to keep it a secret, so I couldn't tell you. But I was getting regular messages from your mother. She was saying that she's doing fine. She didn't want to worry you, Claire. It seems like it's a disease that can be cured with hospitalization and surgery. Please act as if you didn't hear this. That's fine, but recently you were away from home, even on holidays, because you were going to your parents' house. I'm really sorry for keeping it a secret. So that's what it was. But I think I won't have to go for a while after this time. Does that mean your mother is going to be hospitalized? Yeah, that's it.
But don't we need to visit her when she's hospitalized? I think there might be things she wants us to bring. Wouldn't it be better to bring her some supplies? No, that's fine. I'll do that on weekdays. You, who are busy with work? Wouldn't it be better if I helped? You have overtime work. You won't be able to visit during visiting hours, right? No, I can manage. My mother hates to bother others the most, so I have to cooperate with her there. I know I've only known your mother for about two years, but isn't it harsh to call her other people? Sorry, sorry, I misspoke. Anyway, I don't want to bother you, Claire. My mother also says she doesn't want to be a burden. But I can't just do nothing, can I? Besides, during her hospitalization, wouldn't it be better if we cooperated and took care of your mother's needs? I appreciate your feelings, but I want to respect my mother's wishes. Well, I've already caused you trouble with the money. I hope you can pretend you don't know. I'm still not quite convinced. I'm worried. So when you come home, let me hear a little bit more about it. What specifics? I told you what I know. I want to hear the name of the disease, the hospital, etc. What are you going to do with that information? What do you mean by what are you going to do? Is it okay to ask in case something happens? Like I said, my mother doesn't want to be known. I won't tell your mother, you know. I don't see the point in deliberately hiding it. No, you might feel obligated to ask my mother. I won't tell you. What's that? Since you used our savings, don't I have the right to ask? All right, I'll talk about it later. I'm busy now, so see you later. Claire, sorry to interrupt your work, but I have something important to talk about. Something important? I've been made to quit my job. What? I'm sorry. How did that happen? I was kind of blamed for my boss's mistake. What's that? So why do you have to quit? That's strange, isn't it? I know it's strange, but I don't have the power to fight back. Power to fight back? Well, I see. I'm really sorry. I'll do the housework from now on. I'll also try to find a new job as soon as possible. You don't have to. What? Sure, you're working, so we won't be in trouble right away. But I don't want to be dependent on you. It's not that. I mean, it doesn't matter because we're getting a divorce. What? Divorce? Yes. Why the hell? You're divorcing me because I lost my job? How heartless are you? And don't you know that my mother is also sick and having a hard time? Don't talk anymore. You're making me mad. I'll stop by to pick up my stuff after work today and leave. Wait a minute. Are you really going to leave me like this? I'm in pieces and you're just leaving? What about the rent? I'm unemployed. I don't feel like talking to you right now, so I'm going back to work. Claire, we'll discuss this when I get home. And I'm not going to accept the divorce. Claire, are you really going to divorce me like this? Please come back. You said you would contact me when you were ready for a divorce. I'm busy looking for a new home too. I'm currently living in a weekly mansion. You have to come home. Why don't you come back? You never listen to what I say. As soon as I quit my job, you want a divorce. Am I of no use to you if I can't earn money? You're cold-hearted. How am I supposed to tell my sick mother? Are you still saying that? You know what? You think I don't know anything? What? Didn't you have any clue when I said I wanted to divorce? What clue? Well, nothing. You're really shameful for lying to the end. You were having an affair, weren't you? I wasn't. Why are we talking about an affair? The $210,000 for your mother's hospitalization and surgery. That's a consolation payment, isn't it? What are you talking about? I know everything already. The day you took out $210,000 on your own, the day before I noticed, your mother sent me a picture saying she was traveling. Huh? You weren't doing anything for the house. You didn't respond when your mother contacted you. So for about the last year, 
I have been dealing with your mother. Is that so? Did you really get a message from mom? Yes, I did. And yet, your mother is sick. And it's strange that she's traveling and going home. I asked your mother immediately. She said she wasn't sick. No, that's not it. My mother is hiding her illness from you. I think you're lying. You're the one lying, aren't you? I'll only talk with you when my lawyer is present. Your mother also said she would be there. You really did something stupid. I'm sorry, the illness of my mother is a lie. Are you finally admitting it? But I really did lend the money. To whom? A friend. Which friend? A person you don't know. Even if I don't know them, will you tell me? And give me their contact information. I want to verify. No, I don't want to bother them. They're really sick and in the hospital. Even if they're in the hospital, they should be able to communicate, right? I've lent $210,000 from our savings. I can't trust you if I can't confirm it. You even lied about your mother being sick. Okay, I understand. I'll tell you later. When is later? I intend to divorce you now. All that you can do now is to respond to me with sincerity, right? That's why I said I'll tell you later. Fine, you've run out of lies, right? You were making up stuff about your mother's hospital and sickness from what you found on the internet. You paid the $210,000 consolation payment to your boss, didn't you? I know that you paid it because you got your boss's wife pregnant and had an affair with her. Why do you know that? Because your behavior was strange. I contacted your colleague's wife. I'm sorry. You finally admitted it. You've been lying all the time. Do you think there's anyone who wants to live with a man like that? It's not like that. I was seduced by my boss's wife. I was led astray. I was framed. Even if you were, by the time you paid the consolation money, you were at fault, right? You were fired not just because of the affair, but also because you were pointed out for using company expenses for personal use. What are you really doing? You're too despicable. Claire, I'm sorry. I truly regret what I've done this time, but I desperately lied because I didn't want to hurt you. Because the one I truly love is you, it was a lie to protect you. The reason you lied was not for me, but for yourself, right? Do you remember what you said when I left the house? You blamed me for being heartless and you insulted me terribly, didn't you? Where were you protecting me in that? You just hurt me. I did say too much at that time, but I was desperate not to break up with you. You didn't want to break up with me for the money, did you? You paid the consolation money, your savings decreased and you lost your job. And if you get divorced, there will be a property division and you will lose money, won't you? Ask the people around you who is a cold-hearted one. I'm sorry. I won't have an affair anymore. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I don't know if I can forgive you, but... It would have been better if you had honestly told me everything. But you just kept telling stupid lies to not make yourself a bad guy. I'm really disgusted and speechless. Sorry, but I have zero trust in you. No matter what you say, it's too late now. People make mistakes, don't they? I just happened to have an affair. I finally understood how serious it is. Blame yourself for lacking imagination. And don't push the responsibility of your failure onto others. You betrayed me, hurt me with lies. And when I said I wanted a divorce, you were the one who criticized me as if I were the bad guy. I have no intention of getting back together with you. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It's too much to apologize for. I'll get back the consolation money for the affair, the property division, and the money you used on your own. I don't have that kind of money. Then either take out a loan or choose an installment plan. Well, ask your lawyer for details. I'll be going to the discussion soon, so ask then. Please, Claire, don't abandon me. It was you who always worried about me, was kind to me, and supported me, wasn't it? You are the reason why the kind me chose to divorce. The kind wife I used to be isn't here anymore. It's because you turned me heartless. After that, I had a discussion about divorce with my husband, my lawyer, and my mother-in-law. 
My husband was grumbling about not wanting the divorce until the end, but during the discussion, he was battered by mother, and eventually he gave in, and we were able to divorce. The remaining savings of the couple were taken as compensation and proper distribution to me, and the insufficient part will be paid in installments. Since then, my husband has been trying to find another job, but while there's a company had been pulling strings, he could not find any job in the same industry, and is now doing a completely different job. And the wife of the boss, who was the affair partner, also decided to divorce. And I heard that my husband was being pressured to remarry by the ex-wife of the boss. However, my husband does not want to remarry, and discussions for the future are still ongoing. I'm not interested in what will happen. But it's all a result of what my husband did. I hope he takes responsibility and behaves like an adult. Since then, I have found a new place to live alone and have started a new life. That being said, for several months after the divorce, my husband was often not at home, so my life may not have changed much. However, the frustration, anxiety, and despair I felt in my married life are now gone. I have anxiety about whether I can love someone again, but for a while. I'm not going to think about difficult things, and I'm going to take care of myself and live each day. And I plan to have more fun and fulfilling days than my ex-husband. Laura, is Ivy at home? She's out with her friends. She's going to study at the library. Wow, that's commendable, even on a day off. When I was a kid, I used to play all day during holidays. Well, she's serious like me, you know. She's smart and truly a daughter to be proud of. But she's only in the fifth grade. I think it would be okay if she were a little more mischievous. Girls grow up faster, you know. They mature at a totally different speed than boys. Once she hits middle school, she'll probably start saying, "Dad, you're so uncool." Oh, I wouldn't like that. Come to think of it. I feel like my calls and messages with Ivy have been decreasing lately. She used to call me almost every day. It's been two years since she went to work alone in Nebraska. Well, it's just a matter of getting used to it. And you are coming home quite often. Often, only during New Year's, the end of the year, and vacation, right? See, you are coming home quite often. And you take paid leave on Ivy's birthday and our wedding anniversary, don't you? Well, I should do at least that much. After all, I'm forced to work in a faraway place. I have to use my leave properly. Well, it would have been nice if we could live there too. It can't be helped. I was supposed to come back home anyway, and it would change Ivy's environment. She's having a good time surrounded by good friends. That's true. She might also apply to a private school. But your work assignment there will be over soon. That's the only thing I'm looking forward to, Laura. I've put you through a lot, huh? Thank you for maintaining our family while I'm away. What are you talking about? It's not over yet. Yeah, but still, I thought I should mention it anyway. Besides, Ivy is no longer a handful. It wasn't that hard. Well, I do get a little troubled when bugs show up. It takes time for both Ivy and me to get rid of them. So the only time you miss me is when bugs appear. Just kidding. Oh, sorry. I need to get going soon. Huh? Going somewhere? Of course. I do have places to go. Are you going to stay home all day, even though it's your day off, Tom? I don't have any shopping or anything today. You're going to leave Nebraska soon. Why don't you do some sightseeing or something? You have a car, so you can go many places. I'd like to go sightseeing with you all. You really can't stand being alone. No, it's not like that. I just think it's better to enjoy with my family. All right, all right. I'm going out now. Okay, take care. Hey, Laura. Has anything happened to Ivy? Huh? Why do you ask? When I texted Ivy today saying I'd call her tonight, she said she didn't want to talk to me. Ah, she's finally hit puberty. What? Already? Isn't it supposed to start in middle school? Or rather, that's too sudden. Girls tend to grow up faster in many ways. I told you before. Is that so? There's really nothing wrong, right? Nothing's wrong. She's just as usual. 
I did feel our interactions have been decreasing a bit recently, but I never thought I'd be outright rejected. I'm feeling incredibly lonely. Most girls tend to harbor a dislike towards their fathers. It can't be helped. Really? I wonder if I did something wrong that hurt her feelings. You can't do such a thing while living apart. Or maybe your contacts were too annoying? I don't think I've been that persistent. Well, it's just that time of her life. It's a normal part of growing up. You don't have to overthink. It's so hard not to see her until Thanksgiving in this situation. Tom, you do know that Ivy is already in fifth grade, right? You shouldn't fuss over her too much. She's still in fifth grade, though, and I'm not fussing over her. I've only been calling once a week. Once a week seems quite often to me. I enjoyed playing games with her over the phone. Maybe she has a crush on someone. A crush? No way. She's still in elementary school. That's way too early. Not at all. It's perfectly normal. The county fair will be held soon. I'm sure she'll enjoy a little summer romance this year. Please stop. I don't want to hear about it. Aren't you happy that your daughter is growing up? I'm happy about her growth, but... In my mind, she is still a cute little angel. I worry about what the future holds after seeing your reaction. She might start giving you the cold shoulder when you come back. You better be prepared. Somehow, I'm having a strong pain in my stomach. You need to let go a bit. This is a good chance since you're away. If you act as usual, she'll come back around. Is that so? Yes, that's how it is. There's really nothing wrong, right? Nothing, so relax. Okay, I understand. I'll refrain from calling her for a while. Yeah, do that. I'll try to find out, too. No, that's fine. If she noticed, she might dislike me even more. Really? Then I won't ask her anything. Yeah, I'll get back to work. All right, good luck with your work. Girls are bound to change. Don't get too down about it. Tom, long time no see. Are you still working away from home? Yeah, I am. But I'll go back home within half a year. So I'm looking forward to that. Although I'm a bit hesitant. Hesitant? Listen to me, Carl. My daughter has finally hit puberty. She told me the other day that she didn't want to talk to me over the phone. For a dad who adores his daughter like you, that's a huge problem, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's why I'm frantically reading all kinds of books on how not to be disliked by one's daughter. Come to think of it, my sister was like that too. When she was in middle school, she used to say things like, don't wash my laundry with dads. I guess it's normal, huh? Isn't it? But my younger sister wasn't like that, so I guess it depends on the kid. I see. But more than that, I wanted to ask you something. Is your daughter okay? She was rushed to the hospital, wasn't she? Huh? Hospital? I heard she was brought to the hospital where my wife works. She's got a pretty bad injury, right? What? Ivy got injured? Yeah. Did it happen yesterday? No. The day before? She's in the hospital after the accident, right? What are you talking about? My daughter didn't have an accident. Tom, are you okay? You're not escaping from reality or something, are you? No, no, it's not her for sure. I haven't heard any such news. I talked to Laura yesterday as usual. There's no way she wouldn't tell me if Ivy had an accident, right? Well, that's true. But my wife said it was indeed your daughter. She has a great memory. And we went camping together three years ago, remember? So I don't think she's mistaken. Is Ivy really in the hospital? Yeah, I think that's for sure. Then why didn't Laura tell me? Huh, she should tell me, right? I don't know why she didn't tell you. But in most cases, wouldn't it be because she didn't want you to know? Hold on, I'll call her again. Okay. You said it was an accident, right? Yeah, my wife doesn't seem to know the details. 
but it seems she was involved in a traffic accident and was brought in late at night. Late at night? Is she okay? Is she conscious? Sorry. I didn't ask about that. I'm going back home right now. Please let me know when you find out more. Got it. If you're driving home, don't rush. It wouldn't be funny if you had an accident too. I'll do anything necessary, so let me know if there's anything else I can do. Tom, I haven't heard from you for several days. Are you okay? You're alive, right? Yes, I am. Good to hear that. You used to contact me at least once a day. I was worried when you suddenly stopped calling me. Were you down because of Ivy? Yes, that's right. You really do take things seriously when it comes to Ivy. This is the situation. It's serious. You're overreacting. Rejecting their father is like a rite of passage for girls. What I'm talking about is her accident. What? She was in an accident and was taken to the hospital in the middle of the night, right? How did you know? A friend's wife works at the hospital. You know, Carl's. We went camping together before, remember? Now that you mention it, she did say she was a nurse. So why didn't you tell me? I'm sorry. I didn't want to worry you, Tom. You were already upset about being unable to call her, right? I thought if I told you about the accident, you would rush home. So I thought I would wait and see. You kept such a serious matter from me. Ivy broke her leg, didn't she? You should have told me. Actually, she and I had a bit of an argument. And then she stormed out of the house. I was so angry at the time, I told her not to come back. So I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. You were afraid of being blamed, so you didn't tell me, huh? I'm really sorry. Enough is enough. Let's get a divorce. What? A divorce? Because I had a fight with her and kicked her out. Wait, I admit I was wrong to hide it. But the accident wasn't my fault, was it? No, I think it's your fault. She found out you having an affair and confronted you, right? She was mad at you and said she'd tell me the truth, right? That's what led to the argument, I heard. Did you hear that from her? Yeah, I heard from Carl that she was hospitalized. I rushed straight to the hospital. Then she told me everything. You threatened her, didn't you, saying that if she spilled the beans, her comfortable life would end? You even lied that I was having an affair here. I never said such a thing. Even if you deny it, I believe her. She ran out of home in shock and then had the accident. I'm sure her accident is your fault. I'm not having an affair. She made it up. You thought you were safe because you deleted the incriminating photos from her phone? Too bad, a friend of hers took those photos, and they're still on her friend's phone. What? Since I got back here, I had someone look into you for a few days. You were staying at your lover's house instead of visiting Ivy in the hospital, weren't you? Your daughter is seriously injured. How dare you? It's fine, though, because I could spend time with her without you noticing it. But you are doing the most terrible thing as a person and as a parent. You know that? I can't stay married to such a woman anymore. Tom, I'm sorry. I was lonely. I thought I'd hold on a little longer until you come back. But I needed human touch once in a while. I don't care about that. I'm not interested. Please listen. I'm not making excuses, but I've only met him a few times, so it's not like I'm serious or anything. So it's okay because it was just a fling? That's not what I mean. But you're saying so. I might not have chosen to divorce if it was just the affair. But Ivy knows about it. 
and you're the one who drove her to the edge, right? I am sorry. I do appreciate that you took care of the household chores and looked after my daughter while I was away, but we can't live together anymore. You also lied, saying you've only met the guy a few times. I caught him and read your messages. It's been more than six months, hasn't it? Tom, please forgive me. I was panicking too. I never thought Ivy would catch me cheating. I swear I'll never do it again. I'll make up for it in any way I can. Please, just don't divorce me. If Ivy hadn't found out and there hadn't been an accident, I would have considered it. But I can't anymore. I don't think she needs a mother who puts her in this situation. I'll apologize to her too. She said she doesn't want to see you ever again. You betrayed your family and even lied about me having an affair. She said you're not her mom anymore. I'm sorry. I was really stupid. Please forgive me. Please. If you were truly sorry, you'd be by Ivy's side taking care of her. I don't recall marrying someone who would meet another man while our daughter was suffering. The one who changed wasn't her, it was you. We then talked about the way forward with both sets of parents. Everyone but my wife was against our divorce. She reluctantly signed the divorce paper and was immediately taken away by her parents. Thanks to Ivy's strong preference, I was awarded full custody. Laura's lover was someone from her part-time job. I heard she ended up in a relationship after going out for drinks and started meeting frequently. Ivy discovered the affair when she came home early from hanging out with friends and saw her mother getting out of his car. She felt something was off and decided to investigate. It was just fun and games, like playing detective, at first. So when she actually saw her mother cheating, she was too shocked to move. One of her friends took a picture for her, she explained to me through tears. When her mother told her I was cheating too, she could find no place to return to. I can never forgive my ex-wife for what she's done to Ivy. After her parents took her away, she was kicked out of their house. She occasionally contacts me saying she has no one to turn to and can't survive without any job. But I couldn't care less what happens to her, and I have no intention of helping her. What she did to us was that terrible. Unless she bothers Ivy, I have no interest in whatever sort of life she leads. Half a year has passed since then, and Ivy's injuries have healed. I immediately stopped working away from home and moved in with Ivy. With my family's and her friend's support, she is a cheerful girl again. I get home as early as possible and spend more quality time with her. While it's hard to completely erase the sadness, I'm determined to create lots of happy memories from now on to heal her wounded feelings and to clearly show her that there is love that will never betray her.